The U.S. State Department has funded an unusual study, an evaluation of Israeli and Palestinian school textbooks and how they portray each other. Over three years, the study looked at 74 Israeli textbooks and 94 Palestinian textbooks to answer this question. How the Israeli and Palestinian school textbooks portray images of the relevant other, which means from the Israeli point of view, how they portray Arabs, Palestinians, Muslims, and from the Palestinian side of view, how they portray Jews, Israeli, Zionist, how they portray themselves, self-image, how the relations are portrayed as a conflict, what possibility of peace. The researchers noted that it is common in conflict regions for textbooks to show the other side in a negative light. They were pleasantly surprised by one finding from their Israeli and Palestinian work. In general, if we would like to compare the Palestinian and Israeli textbooks to other textbooks like in uh, Kashmir or in Cyprus or in uh, Japan or Cor in, uh, South Korea or China, there's much, much better in, you know, than other textbooks. There's no incitement, there's no hate speech as we always carry in our heads and minds. And uh, as Bruce was saying, there's no descriptions with other as insects or as zoological kind of descriptions. But the researchers also observed many instances where important facts were being omitted altogether. 95% of the maps from the Palestinian books don't mention Israel anywhere. And that plays problematically resonates with the Israeli national narrative that Professor Bartal showed. Uh, that um, the narrative is that the Arabs don't recognize our existence and want to wipe us off the map. And then the maps themselves don't show Israel. The reverse is also true. 76% of Israeli books fail to show the Green Line, a border along the Jordan River. The scientists say these kinds of examples have a cumulative impact. Maybe one map doesn't matter, but when you have a maps, descriptions, and so on, you may not remember a particular event, but you get image. You get image, for example, what is your homeland. And eventually it has an effect on positions that uh, Israeli and Palestinians express towards the peace, towards the solution. These researchers think the currently intractable and, uh, impasse between the Israelis Islamic and Palestinians on a two-state solution might be broken by investing in the long-term perceptions of the students. Our first of all, personalize, humanize, legitimize the other. One, second, provide information about the other from the cultural point of view, from historical point of view. The U.S. State Department says it does not take a position on the findings. It only funded the research as part of its efforts to promote global dialogue. And the team is quick to caution that their study focused solely on school textbooks. And there are lots of other sources of information, such as television, radio, magazines, and newspapers that can color the Israelis' impressions of the Palestinians and vice versa. I'm Priscilla Huff for JN1 in Washington.